the first video of the course, we have seen that most programs can be implemented using five basic instructions. Input, output, maths, conditional execution, and repetition. The only one we haven't seen so far is repetition. That is, performing some action repeatedly, usually with some variation. In this video, we are exploring one of the two control flow structures that allows repetition, the while loop. Many tasks are repetitive by nature. Such tasks may consist of multiple steps executed in sequence, and once the last step has been executed, the entire sequence is repeated from the start. For example, to send a series of Christmas cards, we need to do the following steps. Take card, write name, write message, sign a card, put inside envelope, seal envelope. And then we repeat the process for another card. A program can be written as follows. Write the six statement needed for writing a Christmas card. Then copy the six statement in, with some slight variation, for example, the name on the message for that card. However, we may not know how many times we need to copy the six statement. Is it two or five times? There is another issue with copy paste. What happens if we find a bug in the copied sequence? For example, two missing statements. We forgot to add right address and we also forgot to stamp the envelope. We need to add these two statements everywhere the sequence has been copied. But there lies the danger. We may miss one place. Writing a program in this way leads to maintenance issues. It will be more suitable to have a control flow structure to allow us to repeat sequences of statements. We may know in advance how many times we want to repeat the sequence. For example, 10 times. It is called a definite loop or a count control loop. Sometimes we don't know how many times we want to repeat the sequence. For example, we may want to allocate one hour to write Christmas card. We don't necessarily know how many cards we can do in an hour. It is called an indefinite loop or condition control loop. In a condition control loop, if the condition is true, the sequence is repeated. If it is false, the loop is terminated. Be careful though. If the condition is false to start with, the statements in the loop will not be executed at all. There is something else you need to be aware of. If the condition always remains true, the loop never terminates. The program has entered an infinite loop, which is a runtime error. In the remainder of the video, we explore the condition control loop in Python. An indefinite loop keeps iterating until certain conditions are met. Condition control loop. As explained earlier, there is no guarantee ahead of time regarding how many times the loop will go around. Zero times, many times, indefinitely. Indefinite loops are implemented with the while statement. The keyword is while, followed by the condition that controls the loop. Don't forget the colon after con the condition. Then the body of the loop is a series of statements. Similarly to the if-else statement, indentation is used to define the block of statement forming the body of the loop. When executing the loop first, the condition is evaluated. If it is true, we execute the statement of the body of the loop. On the next one, until we have executed all the statements in the body. Once all the statements have been executed, we have completed an iteration. And then we go back to the start of the loop. Again, we evaluate the condition. If it is true, we do the same thing as before until we have completed another iteration. The body of the loop usually contains statements that modify the evaluation of the condition at some point. It means that at some point, the condition will become false. And therefore, the program exits the loop. Let's look at an example. We want to write a program to display the sum of the nth 
first natural number such that the sum is smaller or equal to the upper limit provided. Here is the code I wrote to do that task. In the first line, you can see that I've got the variable user input who's going to take the input from the user. The result of that command is going to be a string. Therefore, on line two, I create another variable, upper limit, who's going to convert that string into a number, an integer, using the int conversion. Then I need two more variables, total, who's going to store partially the sum or the current sum of all the numbers I visited so far, number, which is the current number I visit, I'm visiting right now, and then I'm going to have the while loop starting on line five. I want to do that as long as total is less than the upper limit. If it's greater or equal to the upper limit, I want to stop because I don't want to add any new numbers. On line six in the while loop, if the condition total is less than upper limit is true, I want to add that number to the total. And then I'm going to increase number by one. So I'm going to be able to have number equal to one, then two, then three, then four, and so on, until I go over the limit. If the condition is false, then I'm going to skip the while loop and move to the print statement and print the result. To see exactly what's going to happen in the code, I'm going to use the debugger, which is a very useful tool, especially when we've got an issue and we don't understand the error. But here I'm going to look at it to be able to look at the state of my program. So the debugger can be found over here, the icon with a small bug. So I'm going to click on that icon and I can see I've got run on debug. But before doing that, what I need to do is to boot a breakpoint. Here is a breakpoint. I'm just saying to the debugger, when you arrive to that red dot, stop and ask me what is the next step. So now I'm going to click on run and debug. So when I'm doing run and debug now, I'm going to have a series of icons on the top telling me the different action I can do here. And here I've got some interesting point here. I've got locals variable, global variable. I'm going to talk about that later on. And then I've got a watch, which is something I'm going to use a little bit later, but very useful as well. So first I want to execute that line. So I'm going to go to the symbol over here to step over. I click on the icon and here I can see I'm going to be asked to enter the upper limit. Let's type 10. When I do that, you can see that the debugger moved to line number two. And then I can see I created the uh, variable user input and it's been assigned the string 10. You can notice it's not the number 10, it's the string 10 because I've got single quotes around it. So now that I've done that, I want to step over that line of code to execute that code. Now I've got a new variable as well, upper limit, and this time it refers the number 10, an int of value 10. So I keep going. So I'm creating a variable total and it's initialized to zero. Then I create the variable number and it's initialized to one. There is something very interesting I can do here, is to create a watch. So I want to see an expression. So for example, I'm going to copy that expression total less than upper limit to see what's happening. And then I'm going to add it to the watch list. And you can see that the result of that expression is true. So I will be able to see if it's changing or not. And that's true because total for the month is equal to zero, which is less than 10. So now I'm going to step over and go to the next part. So now I'm starting the first iteration of my loop. So I'm going to use the instruction total plus equal number, which is going to add the number to total and I'll reassign the new value to total. And now you can see that total has been changed and the value is one. So now I move to the next one and I can see that number has changed, now the value is two. And I'm going back to the uh, first, to the condition of the while loop. For the month, total is still less than upper limit, so it's true, so I'm going to go to the next iteration. And I keep doing that. You can see that now total is going to be equal to three. Number is going to be incremented to three. And I go back to the start of my while loop. And the um, condition is still true. So I'm going to keep iterating. Now you can see that this condition is becoming false now. Okay? Because total has a value of 10, which is not strictly less than upper limit. So I know that I don't want to add anything anymore, okay? So what I'm going to do is 
go to the next step, I go to the start of the while loop, it's going to evaluate the condition which is false, and it's going to skip and go to the print statement. Then I execute the print statement, and now I can see the result. The sum of the fourth fair natural number is 10. And my program is finished. We need to be careful though. Our program seems to work. We run a test and get the right answer. But is it really correct though? Let's try again with an upper limit of 9. The expected output should be 6, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So I'm going to enter an upper limit of 9 and run the program. And here I've got a result which is not correct. I can see that again, the sum of the first four natural numbers is 10. Where in fact, 10 is greater than 9, so already is not correct. And the result I expected was 6, not 10. So I need to debug that. Okay, so again, I'm going to go through the debugger and try to look at the different state of my program during that stage. However, I know that the line up to here, up to line five are correct. I'm fine with that. Okay, so now what I need to do is to check what's happening. So I'm going to go to the debugger and I'm going to put the breakpoint at line five to say, everything is fine up to there. Now you can try to check from line five. And I'm going to run the debugger. So let's run on debug. I'm going to enter the value nine because I know it's, it's a source of error. And then I arrive to that one. Again, I'm going to look at my total under upper limit condition to see uh, the change. So I can skip over total number, number one. So far, so good. The condition is still true, fair enough. Let's go. Total plus equal number. So now total is equal to three. And number is going to be equal to three. Okay. Let's go again. Total is going to be equal to six. Now I'm going to have number equal to four. And my condition is still true. However, if I add the number four now that I've got here to the total six, it's going to be 10. And therefore, if I add that number, if I go again in that iteration of the while loop, something wrong is going to happen because I will have total equal to 10, which is greater than nine. So at that stage, I should have had my condition equal to false, so I don't do another iteration. So here the problem is my condition. And what I should have checked first is if adding that number to my current total will be greater than the upper limit. If that's the case, don't add that number and exit the while loop. If it's not the case, then add that number and go to another iteration. So here my condition is wrong. So I'm going to stop the program and I'm going to change it. So here I'm going to say total plus number should be less or equal to my upper limit. That will be my new condition. Okay. I'm going to save it and I'm going to run the debugger again just to check if it's correct or not. No, I don't want to use that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to create a new watch for this condition to see if it's working the way I expect. So it's not available at that stage because we haven't had a um, limit. So let's put nine over here again. So now I've got all my variables set up and I've got my condition, which is true. So I can step over. Total plus equal number is going to be executed. So total is equal to one. Now number is equal to two. The condition is still true, so I keep going. Total is going to be equal to three. Number is going to be equal to three. So that condition is still working. So I can add the number. So now total is equal to six. Number is equal to four. And now I can see that this condition is not true anymore. Okay, so that's correct. That's what I expected. So it's going to exit the while loop and do the print statement. Okay, seems to be working. So I've done it with value nine. It's working as expected. I shouldn't stop there. 
what I should do is to run it with the value 10 because it was working correctly before. So I need to check that the change I have made are still working properly. So let's try that again. Let's run on debug. Let's put the value 10 and let's run. So far, all is good. And now I can see that this condition is still true. So I'm allowed to add the four to six and I keep going. So now the condition becomes false because I've got 15, which is not smaller than 10. I'm going to exit and I'm going to print the result. And again, the results are correct. So now I'm kind of sure that my solution is correct and I can stop there. As you can see, defining the correct condition for a while loop is prone to error, even for a very simple program like the one shown here. So the message you should get from this is that testing is key. Now we have a control flow structure to repeat a sequence of statements. This enables us to write code that is simpler to read, to understand, and to maintain. In our next video, we will explore the second type of loops provided by Python, the Python language, the for loop.